Hello! This is a follow-up to my previous video in which I repaired this Hewlett Packard 8590A spectrum analyzer. I was not quite happy about my choice of the replacement diodes for the mixer in the first converter of that analyzer. So, in this video I'm hoping to compare different diodes and I still have that great analyzer, so we should be able to measure the difference. I used a matched pair of RF Schottky diodes from Avago Technologies in this series configuration. And as I showed in the previous video, there are three families here with different breakdown voltage and a higher breakdown voltage comes at a cost of higher junction capacitance and higher series resistance. I used diodes from this family, but then I thought it would be a better idea to use this family with lower capacitance and resistance, and maybe even this family, but this family has higher noise, so I'm not so sure about it. Here I have all three families, and the diodes from this family are already installed. Let's try the other two and compare the results. This is how the first converter in this analyzer works. The local oscillator can be tuned from 205 to 3.55 GHz, and this signal is mixed with the input RF signal. And the mixer produces all sorts of components RF plus a low, RF minus a low, a low minus RF, RF plus two a low, uh, a low plus two RF, and so on. And if you carefully look at the numbers, we are clearly interested in this component, a low minus RF. Uh, for example, this end of the range, 1.5 gigahertz when subtracted from this end of the range, 3.55, gives exactly this, 205 gigahertz intermediate frequency. And all other components are filtered out by the low-pass filter right after the mixer. So, here I connected this signal generator directly to the input of the first converter, and this analyzer directly to its output. And here I can tune the LO. I set the zero span, which stops sweeping the LO. It stays at one frequency, and I can set the center frequency here. Currently I set it to 10 MHz, which means the LO will be tuned to the frequency of 205 GHz plus 10 MHz. And then, by putting into the converter 10 MHz signal, I subtract 10 MHz from this, so we end up at that 205 GHz intermediate frequency. I am going to measure the conversion loss at several frequencies and several uh, amplitude levels. We are looking at the 10 MHz 0 dBm signal, up converted to that intermediate frequency. I enabled average in there, and as you can probably see, the conversion loss is about 18 to 19 dB. And don't forget that 6 dB pad in the converter, which I mentioned in the previous video. So, the conversion loss just in the diode mixer must be around 12 to 13 dB. Here is the result of my measurements. I'm using these diodes now, HSMS2802. This is the input signal level, and these are the output levels at different frequencies. And I had to stop at 1 gig, because this is the limit of my signal generator and I rounded the numbers to the nearest dB. So, the conversion loss is the difference between the input and the output, and as you can see, it is quite consistent from about 18 to about 20 dB. 
This is the result of mixing 10 MHz minus 10 dBm signal with the low set to the minimum of uh, 2.05 GHz, just like in the previous video. But this time I'm using the um, 2022 diodes, the ones with the lowest resistance and capacitance. And as you can see, the um, low feed through is a bit lower, which is good around minus 32.7 dBm or so it was around minus 24 before and let's look at the signal it is about minus 25.7 which is a bit higher it was around minus 27 dBm before so this seems like a bit better performance of the mixer and here is the same test but with the 2012 diodes and as expected the result is somewhere in between the low feed through is about minus 29 dBm and the signal is about minus 26 dBm here we have the results for all three families we've seen these results before and as you can see the low feed through gets lower and lower and the signal gets higher and higher but not much these two are almost identical one db difference here and there is probably not very significant i guess it is within the accuracy of this equipment and there is some random variation as well but anyway it looks quite tempting to use these diodes with the lowest uh, low feed through and the lowest conversion loss. And now, just for the fun of it, two unmatched 1N5711 diodes. Check it out. The low feed through is gigantic, about minus 17.6 dBm. And let's look at the signal about minus 29 dBm no wonder this is the worst performance we've seen so far except the blown diodes this is our new calibration data with the 2022 diodes in the mixer and this column this time runs from 202 down to 37 which looks a bit closer to what service manual suggested and I'm not so sure if the rest of the data looks good or not and there are a few parameters which are not calibrated automatically for example this flatness should be entered manually there are a few numbers there and I suspect they are measured at the factory for a particular hardware and I wish I knew how to measure these parameters again and how to adjust them properly this is 1 GHz 0 dBm signal and the reading here is slightly higher about 2.5 or almost 3 let's try minus 10 it is about minus 9 let's try minus 20 this one is quite close let's try minus 40 and the reading is about minus 42 or 43 let's try minus 60 and we are reading about minus 64 so there is not much of a difference with the same test in the previous video the results are almost identical i hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching goodbye